Hello and welcome to the fifth video I have here for the Pi Game tutorial. Now, the reason it's slightly off, which you saw last time, and I can show it again real quick, the reason when we fire these that they don't actually go straight to the mouse cursor, it was more around here, wasn't it? Yeah, you can see that this next T is going above, and now our E and our W, they're going quite a bit above the mouse cursor. That's because of integer division. So let's say it's going to take us 100 frames to get from point A to point B, which is about 3 seconds. So that's pretty reasonable for what our current travel time is. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 seconds, and we're still a little bit off. Let's just say we're moving 100 frames. We're moving across our entire distance over 100 frames. Now, when we do that, the pixel, since pixels are integers, they can't, you know, you can't move half a pixel at a time. What's happening is over 100 frames, if we need to move, say, 3.55 pixels to go 355, or 355 pixels as a total distance, then we need to move 3.55 per frame. Well, integer division in integers with pixels only allow us to move 4. So instead of moving 355 pixels, we're going to move 400 pixels. That's quite a big difference. Same way if it's the other way around. If we're moving 3.4, pixels, we need to move, we're going to total over the 100 frames, 340 pixels moved. But because of the rounding, we're only going to go 300 because it rounds down. So we're losing between, you know, usually around 50 pixels at most. At the worst case scenario, we will end up losing 50 pixels in accuracy, which is why some of these letters don't quite go where we expect them to. So we need to kind of fix that. So what we can do to fix it is we can say something like this. You know, we have real x move. So I'm going to say x travel. And this is going to be equal to our real travel, which is the x move multiplied by our number of frames. Because this is what we're predicted to actually move. And y travel is going to be self dot y, self dot y move times the number of frames self dot x move. So what these are going to do is these are our real travels. So if x move, you know, after its divisions all done, ends up being 3.4, then it's only going to end up being 3. When it we travel, when we actually move, it's going to end up moving as 3 instead of 3.4. We're going to times that by the number of frames, and this is our real travel. That way, if we do something like x difference minus x travel, this gives us the problem. Basically, our difference in travels, our distances from our target to ourself. So y difference minus y travel. This is that distance that's off. It's basically whatever distance we didn't quite go to. So when we're checking, you know, we lose, we, I was, in the example I was using, we lose, you know, 40 or 50 frames when we move, we move, to, if we moved a total of 340 pixels and we only move 300, then 40 is our difference. So, you know, 340 minus 300 leaves us with 40. So that's what we still needed to travel. So if we still needed to travel 40 pixels, how might we work around that? Well, if I say self.rect.x, and I know I'm explaining this bad, and I should probably use more pictures, plus equals this difference, and self.rect.y plus equals plus equals that difference, then what this is going to do is at our spawning time, so at the time that we get our target, which is when we spawn, these are going to actually move and it's going to make them more accurate. Now, they're still off a bit, but we'll fix that in a moment. So what's happening is, uh, it's actually kind of hard to see because we're drawing things in the wrong order. So let's go down to our draw just to make this more clear. Um, let's see, we'll draw all of our bullets after we draw our player. I'm going to just going to move these down under the player course tab this back so everything's lined up and working correctly okay so now let's run it so now the bullets should spawn on top of the player so now what we'll see is when we click these things aren't always spawning in the center 
Now let's see, where's a good example of this? Okay, it's not currently working because I forgot to cast this to an integer. So because the number of frames we travel is going to be, or we travel across, is always going to be constant, because we can't, you know, when we update the screen and we travel a new frame, or we travel our X difference and Y difference, or X move and Y move, each frame. That's what we're traveling every frame that we use our travel function. So when we move each frame, uh, the number of frames we move, we can't move half a frame. A frame happens or it doesn't happen. So casting this to an integer is going to make it so that this, this divides as an integer and this multiplies as an integer. So our X travel and Y travel will actually give us the right values now. So now you'll notice when I click down here, you can see that the, they don't spawn inside the box perfectly anymore. So you notice the J, it's spawning, they're spawning toward the corner now and then moving. Whereas if I clicked here, they're spawning much closer to the center. This offset when we spawn them is going to make it much more accurate when we shoot these, when we shoot our projectiles, all of our letters at the enemies, which I think is much more worth it than making them always spawn from the center. Since we can't really work around uh, the fact that we're dividing by integers and the fact we can only move one pixel instead of half a pixel, uh, there are other ways we can do it where we kind of, you know, calculate, we take our difference and instead of just adding it at the spawn, we add the difference, you know, every single frame that we move. But I think it works just as well adding it at the spawn. It doesn't look quite as smooth, but it works for this example because we have such a large, you know, firing circle basically that we have, which is our big blue box. Now, there's one more thing I want to do. So currently our target, which is our X move, or sorry, our target, which is our X difference, um, when we take the cursor, we minus self.rec.x, we're actually targeting the top left corner because you could see this is our target, basically. It's the top left corner of the letter. We want it to be the center of the letter. So all we have to do is minus self.rec.width over 2, and I'm going to minus self.rec.height over 3. And the reason for that is if you remember, the letters have, uh, they're not quite even. So if you watch the K, it has this white space below it um, before it bounces. So because it has a much larger white space on the bottom than it does any other side, I'm going to use three. And now you'll notice instead of these firing at the top left corner, they're firing pretty much down the center. Now, of course, you don't have to do divided by three. You can do divided by two. I just like it. It's my preference. So there you have it. Let's see, bullets should travel much faster, so I'm going to change this up to be 20. Um, I believe our get target is finished, our travel is finished. Um, there's something I wanted to change up really quick. Oh yeah, that's right, I wanted to handle the spawn delay inside of the actual player now. So, player.moveAmmo, that happens every single frame. All of this spawning stuff happens every single frame, so we can actually move it. This way we're going to keep our actual, you know, main loop as small as it can be. And we're just going to kind of stick everything outside. So define update, cooldown, minus equals one. What else is going to happen? Well, all of this stuff is also going to happen. So let's see. And I believe I just have to tab all this stuff over. Okay, so now inside of the update, we're going to say if spawn delay is less than or equal to zero, and I should change this to self.spawnDelay and self.spawnDelay. Then player.spawnAmmo. I actually don't have to say player. I can say self because it's my own function that I'm referring to. And then, you know, self.spawnDelay equals self.spawnDelayMax. And now all I have to do is when we do the ammo, let's, you know, organize these. Self spawn delay delay one day I'll be able to type that properly it's going to equal zero and self dot spawn delay max is going to equal I think it was what 15 and then this has to do with firing so I'm just gonna space these out speed has to do with X position there we go. So spawn delay and spawn delay max. Let me make sure those were right in the update. 
spawn delay, spawn delay max. Yep, so now it should still perfectly work because something's wrong. Player is not defined. Oh. <laughs> Self dot move ammo. Uh, that tapped funny, so I didn't even notice it was supposed to be inside the function. There we go. Now it should work. There we go. And of course, we have everything spawning. It's actually spawning faster, I believe. Of course, we can adjust that easily. Everything's spawning. We can shoot just fine. It's all happening inside the update function. So we just have things, you know, sighted more into the player class. So everything that's supposed to happen in the player is happening in the player. We don't have to put a lot of stuff inside of our actual game loop. So for object in bullets, what if we had some type of, you know, class that was a game controller and uh, the game controller had a list of bullets in it? I suppose that's one way that we could do this. Um, there's only ever one player object, so I guess we could consider the player as a game object. We could have an active bullets list inside of the player and then, of course, you know, put this uh, function inside of the player's update. You know what? That doesn't actually sound that bad. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it over, and I'm going to go back to our player, and we're going to put it in the player's update. So let's see, we're moving the ammo, and then I'm just going to say, you know, um, active in scene or whatever, I don't know. I guess that will tell me what it's supposed to mean. Active in scene. Well, this, for objects in the bullets, which is going to be a big bullet list, which is this list up here, but we're going to move it, so we don't need it up here anymore. Let's see, since we spawn the bullets inside of our player class, we can actually set them up this way. So, self.bullets is equal to a list, and then when we spawn ammo, we can say self dot or not spawn ammo, but when we fire, shoot, and we say bullets dot append, self dot bullets dot append bullet, and then inside of our update, we say for object and self dot bullets do all the object stuff. Um, game window dot blit uh, player is not a function, is it? No, it's not. So we don't have to pass it the game window. Uh, later, we're going to set everything into functions, and it's going to be really awkward with a lot of stuff. So I'm not sure if I want, you know, this game window dot blit, the object, in there. Um, but for now, it'll actually work. But we'll have to worry about changing it later on, maybe. Um, what's going on? Okay, so we're spawning them, but they're not actually drawing. That's interesting. For object in self dot bullets game window dot blit object dot image object dot rect. That's happening inside the update function, but it's not actually drawing them onto the game window. Huh. I'm not sure why that's happening actually. It seems like it should be working properly. See, we're updating, which is where we draw them. Um, and then we're drawing our actual player image, which we probably should draw in the update too. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm thinking about this, and I'm going to copy the player's draw too. Just because, you know, the player should be able to draw itself inside of its own update. So we're going to draw the player. So right here. I'm going to say game window. I'm actually going to change this to just GW. GW. And inside the update, I'm going to tell it where you're updating yourself. So when we call update, we need to give it something that it's updating itself on. So we could create any surface that we wanted to update on, but I want this player to update on the game window itself. So by changing all of this and then passing it, game window, it should work. So update to the game window. And now this should work. 
and now it's not. How interesting. I know why we're not drawing this, at least. Um, we don't say s player, we say self. <laughs> and here we say self again. Is this just because we're saying stupid player stuff that it's not drawing properly? Still not drawing. So it took me a minute to figure it out, but I found out what the problem is. Player.update. This is where we do all of our drawing, correct? Game window dot fill white. Okay, so we're drawing everything and then painting over it. That, to me, sounds like a problem. So let's move some of this stuff around. Um, move this. Draw stuff here. Let's say that there's another section called updates. And then we'll do our player update. And now, now it all works the way we expect it to. And of course, we up the speed on these projectiles, so they move much more like an actual bullet. They might even still be moving too slow for, you know, an actual bullet type object. Maybe they need to move a little bit faster. Um, we'll have to see about that, though. But for now, everything is still working, and we still move properly. Yep, we can fire correctly. Everything seems to be working again. So inside of the update, it does work. We're passing it, of course, the game window that we're updating to. So it's now working. We were just, the only problem was we were drawing it in the wrong order. So now we're filling it, we're doing our update, and then of course we're updating the screen and repeating that cycle. So now everything is working. Um, that's gonna be it for this time. Next time, we're gonna organize this a little bit better. Uh, we're going to do a big change in how everything is organized. So currently, you notice we have to do all of this scrolling, and it's not that fun, and it's really hard to organize everything. We're going to organize stuff into different files, like what I have up here, where I have, you know, where I do my examples, or I do the pre-video example, or even the last one that I'm not even going to show still. <laughs> um, it is It is full of stuff, but it has some problems with it. But... We're going to change this up because, especially if you take a look at our player, like, look at how many lines this thing is. It goes from 57 down to what? Somewhere around, if we find it, 126. Uh, let's clean these up too because we don't need spawn delay or spawn delay max now that we're handling everything inside the player. Uh, we're going to make the player its own file as its own class and then store variables with itself, and then we're going to import it much like we've been importing Pygame in random. What we're going to do is when we create its own Python file for our player class, we can say something like from, you know, player class import player active, and then this is going to allow us to use player active from inside the player, or I should say something like player file is more accurate. So from the player file, import the player active class, and then we can say player equals player active, and then everything is going to be exactly the same as it was. It's just now we no longer have to hold the player inside of our main Python file. We can put it elsewhere, and it's just better organization that way. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been the fifth video of this tutorial, and I hope to see you next time.